ಪಾವನೆಭ್ಯೋ ವೈಷ್ಣವೆಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ನಮ ನಮೋ ಮಹಾವದನ್ಯಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರೇಮ ಪ್ರದಾಯತೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯ ಭಕ್ತ ತದಭಕ್ತ ನಮೋ ನಮ ಯಂ ಪ್ರಪ್ರಜಂತಮನುಪೇತಮೇತಕೃತ್ಯಂ ದ್ವೈಪಾಯನೋ ಬಿರಹ ಕಾತರಯಾಜುಹಾವ ಪುತ್ರೇತಿ ತನ್ಮಯತಯಾತರ್ವೋಭಿನೇದು ತಂ ಸರ್ವೂತಹೃದ ಮುನಿಮಾನತೋಸ್ಮಿ ತವೈವಾಸ್ಮಿ ತವೈವಾಸ್ಮಿ ನ ಜೀವಾಮಿ ತ್ವಯಾಧೀನಿಘ್ಯರಾಧೆ ತಂಗ್ನಯ ಮಾಮಚರಣ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಲ್ ಮೈ ಹಾರ್ಡ್ಲಿ ಕೋಟಿ ಕೋಟಿ ಟಂಡೋತ್ ಪ್ರಣಾಮ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಲೋಟಸ್ ಸೀಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೈ ಸ್ಪಿರಿಚುವಲ್ ಮಾಸ್ಟರ್ ನಿತ್ಯ ಲೀಲಾ ಪ್ರವಿಷ್ಟ ಓಂ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಪಾರ್ ಅಶ್ವತ ಶ್ರೀ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಪ್ರಜ್ಞಾನ್ ಕೇಶವ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಅನ್ ಸೇಮ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಲೋಟಸ್ ಸೀಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೈ ಶಿಕ್ಷಾ ಗುರು ಓಂ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಪಾಲ್ ಅಷ್ಟೋತ್ತ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ I am very happy that from various places so many devotees have come here also from mainland america from australia from other kind countries <laughs> so many have come <laughs> so I am very happy. Also, my dear son, my dear son, Gaur Sundar, he was, he has lost his hope of life. But anyhow, he is saved and he has come to a festival. my blessing that very soon he can move sing song as before and help me in various way i think that like me swami maharaj bhakti vedan swami maharaj he used to travel like me everywhere and a couple of years he started centers in the midst of ocean on the top of hills <laughs> in all countries and very miraculously he translated men shrimad bhagavatam chaitanya charitamritam and he wrote so many books not only in america but in england and all other countries australia new zealand here there russia uh, everywhere he preached his mission and in his last time he also took my hand in his hand and weeping he told that 
I have gathered, I have gathered so many disciples from whole world, sannyasis, learned so, but I could not train them well. So please help them and give my samadhi. And for this, I am travelling here and there. Teaching the same message, not different from him, because he has preached the mission of our Guru Parampara. First, his Guru Dev, Bhakti Vinod Thakur, and gradually the whole Guru Parampara, Guru Goswami, and he has accepted this Guru Parampara. So, he was in this parampara and he has nothing told anything but in English language same thing as Rupa Goswami has preached in his mission and he has wrote so many books. So Swami Maharaj in a couple of years he did so of miraculous and he made a yeah, revolution yeah. in religious world. By his order, I am also coming to tell the same message. And the message by Rupa Goswami, at that time, he thought that my devotees are not qualified. But now, they have become qualified and I am preaching most serious and very deep philosophies of love and affection like gopis, mood, even I am giving. But it is not different from him. He has written everything in his books. So I am preaching only his mission that he wanted and in whole world again I am preaching same mission. I want that oh Gopinapal oh, Prabhu should come and tell why all are gathered here huh? why Swami Maharaj also came and what priest you should tell two words? There's always one fear when Guru Dev comes. <laughs> that you're going to be standing where I'm standing right now. With one of these in your mouth. Yeah. Uh, so, but also something inspiring. Because you're really never at a loss for words when he's around either. Those of you who know me know I'm usually not either. But... In this case, it's especially easy to glorify our Guru Parampara, Srila Gurudev and Srila Prabhupada. Um, just for that very reason. Um, Krishna Surya Sammaya Haya Andhakar. That whenever they come, Maya takes an immediate um, running leap out the back door. Because you know, when the pure devotee comes, then it means that all the parampara and all Krishna, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Gaur Leela, Krishna Leela, follow them. So this is what, uh, this is where we are tonight, and this is what we have to look forward to over the upcoming week. Um, let's see. What else? Oh, 
when, uh, like when Davy asked her husband, what's the best thing you can do with your life? What's the best possible worship you can do? And Lord Shiva responded, uh, Aradhanam Sarvesham Vishnor Aradhanam Vishnor Aradhanam Param. And then like sort of waited for a second for the follow-up and said, but oh, something better, something better than the worship of God himself. Tasmat Parataram Devi Tadiyanam Samacha means that to worship those things that are dear to God, to worship those that paraphernalia and those individuals who are right there in the pocket of Radha Krishna Kanjugo um, is the highest possible, even higher than the highest worship. So when Gurudev comes. I, w I always wish I could glorify him nicely. Just like in the same way that, uh, this, I think when Gurudev's here, it's like, it's like the only time that I support the idea of stem cell research and human cloning. <laughs> <laughs> How would it be to have thousands of Srila Gurudev's traveling around the planet? <laughs> or even we could change Shastra, like, uh, Sarva tak panipadam tak sarva tak shikshara If he had arms and legs, thousands of them everywhere, <laughs> that would be wonderful for us. Well, there must be other good shlokas. Advaitam achutam anadim anantarupam. If there could be th uh, unlimited guru de, uh, ramadi murti shukalanya mena tishtam, like coming off like ocean waves off the ocean. Gurudev, one Gurudev after another after another and flooding the planet. So anyway, <laughs> I know you all stand behind me and on behalf of all the devotees here who have worked so hard to make this happen, um, I would of course like to welcome Srila Gurudev and his entourage. Thank you. And all of you who come from all over the world, thank you very much. Say, Nidran Prabhu should come and <coughs> speak to us. This is the process. Um, I, I'm thinking uh, that uh, we, we're unlimitedly lucky to have your association. Welcome you here. And, uh, hope I can give my whole heart to you and please you in every way. And uh, I'm happy to be in everyone's association here. All glory to Srila Gurudev. Oh, yeah. See, my Bharat Prabhu should come and speak to us. Shri Gurudev asked why he has come and why we have come. One time he said in New Braj that I have come to take hearts. I take them and I put them in my pocket and I don't give them back. <laughs> so when we see his divine grace, we know that he is the possessor of our hearts. And when we get close to him, we feel some connection. Srila Jagadananda Pandit and Prem Vivarta, he was writing about his relationship with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Swarup Damodar asked, what are you writing, Panditji? He said, oh, I am just writing about my relationship with Chaitanya, my, my Prabhu. And I'm thinking in any order, just for my own pleasure, I am writing. So Srila Gurudev has drawn us here because he said once that by doing bhajan, doing preaching, you will become happy. This is the goal of our life, to become happy. And we're realizing that happiness is developing relationships. Srila 
uh, Pratipuja Maharaj, and uh, when he saw that he had offended uh, Jad Bharat, and he said that I'm not afraid of uh, Lord Shiva, and I'm not afraid of Indra's thunderbolt, but I am very much afraid of offending a Vaishnava. So Srila Gurudev has come to teach us how serious spiritual life is and how by developing loving relationships with each other on this plane, then we could have some platform to develop a loving relationship on that plane. So by his merciful, tolerant, constant knocking on our heads, slowly but surely, by his mercy and by his affection. Srila Gurudev said, it's not just love, but love and affection. Affection is the manifestation of love and is an active principle. I pray that somehow he will give me the mercy and that I will take this opportunity of this human form of life. Om Gyan Nitamrandasya Gananjana Shunakaya Chakshuran Militam Yeno Tazma Shri Gurudev Namaha I thought I was getting a free ride since I'm from Badger, not from Hawaii. <laughs> but I pray to Shri Gurudev that I can... I pray to Shri Gurudev that I can find my heart and speak it to his. Uh, several years ago, when I was in Oakland, California, and Gurudev was there, um, I was having trouble getting past all this mental energy that I've acquired due to my karma, and I was desperately trying to understand what everybody was experiencing in their heart, around me. So I asked Pankish Sharpabhu to please take me up to see Srila Gurudev. And he brought me into his room, and Gurudev had already been descending to go to class. And there were three ladies in there weeping. And I figured I don't stand a chance, but you know, it's who you know in this world. And the Panky uh, brought me to Gurudev. And I said, Gurudev, can you tell me? Oh, I said, first I said, Gurudev, your classes are so wonderful. And he said, but? I said, no, but Gurudev, but I can't seem to enter in. And he said, uh, and I said, can you tell me what's wrong with me? And he said, that I will tell you in Badger. But the next morning I was there at a class he was giving with just a few people. And he turned to me and he asked me to try to explain Gurudev Kripa Vindudiya. And I tried according to my capacity. Um, he said, this is not like a poet, but every day this prayer must come from the core of your heart. And then he asked me, what is the meaning of Atma Sata? And I didn't get it. And then he said, it means, make me yours. He says, on my own, I can't chant. I can't remember. Actually, I can't do anything. So Gurudev, why is he coming around? And why are we here? Because as Gurudev was saying earlier, his mission is the same mission as our Srila Prabhupada and Srila Rupa Goswami the mission of love and affection. And the love and affection that he's coming to preach is something very, very high. But somehow or other, by our connection with him, gradually we're beginning to understand things that even very, very senior devotees in institutions all over the world aren't grasping. Because he's the possessor of love and affection. And I know in my own heart I have no love and affection, I don't have anything, I have no wealth. But the greatest opulence I have is a slight connection with his lotus feet. Because by that connection, something can come into this heart which is worthwhile 
and can make my life auspicious and auspicious for those who come in contact with me. So I can only pray helplessly and hopelessly at his feet. I know why I'm here. I know that he has his love and affection. Once I asked him, Gurudev, would you please do the hard work? And then the second opportunity I had to ask him, Rajanath Prabhu was downstairs in Badger, and I said, are you sure you want this? He said, the last person who asked for this their whole life went up in smoke. <laughs> and I said, I have no choice. So I'm here because I want the hard work. Part of me that's sane and rational wants the hard work. The other part that has opposing tendencies, I'm praying that he'll crush with one swift kick of his boot and bring me to his lotus feet. is of any value. <coughs> Please forgive me, we just got off an airplane. We've been flying all day and I'm in winter clothes because in Badger there's snow everywhere. There's a blizzard, record blizzard. And last night we were in LA and it was so freezing cold, Gurudev, they don't even have heaters in their rooms. And it was the coldest day in all of all of history in LA. So here the, I feel completely unqualified to be present before you, but also so um, honored and excited and happy that I could possibly be in this assembly today. Um, and as Gopavrindapa was so beautifully saying that, um, that oh, how wonderful it would be if Gurudev had many waves of Gurudev were, were coming off the ocean. Um, but we don't need that because we have one Gurudev. And uh, that's sufficient for, um, completely inundating this entire world and universe um, with this love of God that he's come to give us. And he's so beautifully explained how, as an extension of Srila Prabhupada, he's come um, especially because we weren't qualified, and still we're not qualified, but um, somehow or other he's, he's giving this amazing um, substance called bhakti. And in this world there are so many influences um, financial influences and power of all um, sorts and we can even put like tiny little computers in little tiny boxes now and um, but this love and affection that Gurudev has come to teach us has come to show us how it's how it's done <laughs> to teach us how to um, nurture it to show us um, that the only purpose of our lives is to um, generate this to others and um, to um, one day um, serve in that realm that's entirely only consists of love and affection. Thank you. Now, years old, she are very attentively. I am going to tell very deep some knowledge. When <laughs> it was Mahapralaya, destruction, destruction fully. If we were water and water, then from the Navi, Navel of Garbhodasai Vishnu, 
a lotus came out. Flower was on the top of the water. And from the that stem, lotus stem, uh, lotus stem, stem, Brahma was created himself. And then when he came up, he wanted to see, oh, where these lotus come coming from, or is it? And he was going up and down, but could not discover. discover. Then he sat there on the water and began to think, what should I do? I don't know what should I do. <clears throat> then at once from the water a sound came, tapa, tapa. Tapa means to do austerity. And then he began to austerity. In Samadhi. And then about 1000 years of his own years. God Naran placed and came up in his trans samadhi told that I am very happy. Now you should have a bone. Then Brahma told, I know your wish that I should create this world. What I am fearing? That when I will create this world, then I may have a false ego that I am independent uh, Srishti Karta, creator. creator of this world. So Prabhu, this should, this, uh, this should not come in my heart. Then Narayan told him that you should hear Javanaham jatha bhavo jodarupa guna karma ka tatra vijyana vastu te mada nukraha jnanam parmam guhiyam jad vijyana samanvitam sarhasyam tatangasya grihan kaditam vaya. Oh, you should hear. And you should realize by mercy. Anyone cannot understand and realize my these words unless I will bestow my mercy to so I am giving this so this gyan is paramam gohiyam tattva gyan hmm? jadabhi gyan samanvitam and it is with big gyan means prema bhakti what kind of prema bhakti? Oh, like gopi's heart. Up till that, even in the heart of Radhika Madanakya Bhav, that is extreme tattva gyan and prema bhakti, the service of Krishna. Sarahasyam All these things, prema bhakti, jijarhasya, and tadanga, the method, the process by which anyone can realize this. What is this? The Samanam, Kirtan, Vishnu, Smaranam, Padashivanam, Archanam, Bandhanam, Darsham, Sakramam. Moreover, five, Sadhusanga, Nam, Kirtan, Bhagavat, Sravan. Mathura Bhashi Muttir Shaddhaya Shiva. Shakal Sadhana Shesht Ei Panchanga Krishna Prem Janma Ei Pachira. Sadhu Sangha, hearing Hari Katha, Bhagavad Katha, worshipping deities, 
being in Vrindavan or the birthplace of Krishna, Mahaprabhu, these places. Grihan Kaditangmaya. I am giving you this knowledge, Tattva Gyan. And by mercy, you should Grihan. Oh, you should take it. Jamanaham, how I am. Means, Jada Rupa Guna Karma Kaha. Oh, Supreme Lord is Krishna Himself. He is Swam Bhagavan. His name Krishna, very attractive. He is very Bhakta Vasalya. Affectionate to his Bhakta And Karma Ka. Karma Mane, his pastime, sweet pastime. What? How Mother Jasoda, who is not up, not down, not side, not anything, and Mother Jasoda he tightened him. And he became control of that love. And moreover, Karma Kaha, Rash Lila. This is the topmost Lila of Krishna. And he did in Brahma one night. So much. Because in one night it cannot be. So he prolonged it. Brahma one night there. And it is Rasasthani. Moreover, Brahmargi, Gopi Geet, or Benu Geet, Jugal Geet. All, all these, these are the five life, yeah. life of, of Hari Katha, this Bhagavatam. He did. So, by, by special mercy, you should know. And, Rite Artham Jata Pratiyeta Na Pratiyecha Atmani Tad Vidyatmano Jata Bhavo Jata Bhaso Jata Tama. Rite Artham, Arth is Krishna Malli and his sweet pastimes, attribute and other things. Rite Artham, where there is not this, in not my Swarup, not in my Dham, Jat Pratiyeta Cha Atmani and out of Kolok Vrindavan, who is Seen that is he has she has created this world this that with apidyat mano mayan jatha bhaso jatha tama like jatha bhaso there are two kinds of maya anuchit jiv tatastha shakti from that she has transferred into vibhinans jiv we are all vibhinans jiv and Tama, where there is darkness, that is this world. Relation to us, he is my brother, he is my son, he is my wife, he is my husband, all these things. We are attached. Also we are attached to this body, that I am this body. And there are my relatives. This is Antakar. Hmm? So, Jatha Mahant Bhutani Bhuteshachar. Go to Gurudev and he will teach us you all these things. These are Chatur Shloki Bhagavata. You should know also that this Chatur Shloki hmm, is the Sutra. Condensed form. Condensed form of whole Srimad Bhagavatam. Whole. Twelfth canto and 18,000 shlokas in them. Not only that. All the Vedas, the essence of all the Vedas are in this. In first shloka of Oh, yes, sir. Rigvabe. 
there are four divisions. First, Vedas were only one Jajur, uh, Atharva way. But Srila Pyasdev came and divided it into four according to subject. And then uh, he gave, Brahma gave it to Vyasadeva, this knowledge. And then he divided four Vedas into four according to subject. First mantra of Rigvabed, the Anubha, the Sa, essence. essence, is in the first sloka of Chatur Sloki. Javanaham Jatha Bhavo Jadarupa Gurmata. And then, first sloka of Shambhi, the purport of that whole essence of that is in the second sloka of Chatur Sloki Bhagavata. And the first sloka of Jajurveda, the essence of it, is in Chaturtha sloka, fourth sloka. And the first sloka of Atharvaveda, the essence is in third sloka of so all Vedas are also there. You also know that Vyasadeva divided Vedas into four. And the essence of that whole Veda, he made Brahma Sutra, essence of all. Brahma Sutra. That is, that is called Vedanta Sutra. And after that he did Mahabharata. All the Purans, but he was not satisfied at all. He was thinking, what to do, what to do? Why I am not satisfied? I have done so many things. And in the meantime, Brahma told to Naraji, go. And this is Loki Chatus Bhagavat I am giving to you. You should give it to Bhyas. And he should narrate, expand. At that time, Narad came to him and told, oh, I am seeing you are restless. You are not in calm and quiet. Why you are so worried? Then he told Gurudev, this is my disease. Disease. Uh, disease. You bite, you know, you are by there. Doctor. 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 He can kill the power. You should see my nurse. And then decide what rogue is there in my heart. What I have done. I am not satisfied. Then, at that time, Narada told, I know, in the Vedas, in Brahma Sutra, in Mahabharata, whether there is Gita Upanishad, but you have not given Pradhanata. Prominency. Eh? Prominency. Prominency of Krishna Bhagavat sweet pastimes. We have only impressed on dharma, artha, kam, and moksha. Have you told that Krishna is Swain Bhagavan? Have you told that, oh, your mother Jasoda, though you are Ajanma, but you have come from his own, his own, own. Have you told that Gopis has controlled you and you are controlled by them? Have you written? 
have you written that Krishna is telling, na pare ham nirvatya sanju jan? I cannot repay gopis. In the life of Brahma even, demigods, I cannot repay you. You should be happy and you should be pleased to but by your own sweet behavior, then, but I, I am always you, indebted to you. Indebted to you. Krishna told. Have you written this thing? Have you written Brahma Gita and all these things? Then Narad told. At once, go to your, mm, you should go in samadhi yoga, bhakti samadhi yoga. And by samadhi yoga, he apasyat pursam purnam mayang chadaj jada apasya. He became in samadhi and what he saw, top to bottom, all the sweet pastimes of Krishna, how he took birth, how he did so many pastimes, even Ross and all these things. And then for the jivas who are in this world, they are binded by Maya, he told them. For their goodness, welfare, welfare he composed that Srimad Bhagavatam and taught to his own son, Sukhdeva, who was Nipratipa, who was detached from, totally from world and from worldly attachment. So, Sukhdeva Goswami was first speaker and preacher of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Gradually, we will discuss, uh, discuss, uh, discuss, discuss all these things. So, any kirtan, and then any translation is needed? No, no, it's up to you. Sundar can sing. You can come in here. Come on this side.
So Srila Gurudev has described to us the incident where the spiritual master of Srila Vyasadev, who is the literary incarnation of the Supreme Personality of Godhead for the purpose of giving the Vedic knowledge within this world, uh, how that spiritual master of Vyasadev, Sri Narada Muni, came there to the ashram of Vyasadev. Although Srila Vyasadev was the most highly learned person, <clears throat> he could not understand why he was feeling dissatisfied uh, after having written all of these different Vedic literatures, as Srila Gurudev described, dividing the, the Ved into four different Ved, four different Vedic parts, also then writing Vedanta Sutra to summarize all the philosophical conceptions of the Vedas, then writing Mahabharata, and in this way, uh, Srila Vyasadeva made his full attempt to give to the conditioned souls of this world that knowledge that they would require to surmount this very difficult Maya Shakti potency of the Supreme Lord and attain their eternal constitutional position. But yet he was still not satisfied, although he had given all of this information. For some reason, he felt dissatisfied and he could not detect why. So when Srila Narada Muni came there, then Srila Vyasadeva requested him to please enlighten me. Uh, what is my defect? What, what have I not done correctly? Why am I not feeling satisfied? So Sri Narada Muni at that time, <clears throat> in explaining to Vyasadeva this Chatur Shlok, these four nutshell verses, complete summary of the Srimad Bhagavatam, he also described to Srila Vyasadeva about his own life. In his previous life, before being this great 
a divine personality, Sri Narada Muni, who travels everywhere throughout the entire material universes, material creation, and even within the spiritual worlds. Sri Narada Muni goes everywhere. He is an eternal servant of Sri Krishna and Sri Narayan. And he comes and appears here, there, and everywhere at any moment to help the conditioned souls, to guide them. Sri Narada is the guru of thousands and thousands and millions of great personalities. But how did he become like this? What was the history of his own life? So Sri Narada Muni began to describe to Vyasadeva that in his previous life, before being Narada, he was born in a very simple uh, situation. He was the son of a maid servant, a lady who used to serve uh, in a very menial way, sweeping the temple and doing all different types of chores. And this was all that he had in the world, simply his mother. She was the maid servant uh, living in one kind of ashram, temple. So Narada Muni described that when he was a young boy, uh, very young, like five years old, at that time, in the rainy season in India, there are four months in which the sadhus generally don't travel so much because it's not so easy to travel here and there. So they stay put in one place. And during this particular time, in this rainy season, four very effulgent spiritual personalities, great sages, they came there to this ashram and they took up residence in this ashram. So because Narada was a small boy, living there, he also had the opportunity to associate with these great sages. And Narada Muni describes to Vyasadev how he was very attracted to these sages. He himself was, had some specific, unique, good qualities and character. He was not like ordinary children that always want to pray, play frivolous games, but rather <clears throat> he was very uh, quiet, very well behaved, and these sages, they used to sit together and discuss so many spiritual subject matters. And they became so inspired together. And Narada used to hear them speaking all these different topics. So Narada Muni, he began to serve these great sages in very simple ways. He associated with them and he began to hear from them all these topics of transcendental knowledge. As he was hearing from them, he became more and more attracted to them. He became more and more inspired by them. And he, he describes that one day, by their permission, they gave him the remnants of their Mahaprasadam. And when Narada Muni received this great uh, spiritual substance, the very Mahaprasad that had touched the lotus mouths of these great sages, and he very respectfully received this transcendental food stuff, immediately he felt completely purified. And he began to understand that he is, I am not this material body. I am a transcendental eternal soul. Spiritual knowledge came into his heart. And those great sages, they blessed him with transcendental knowledge. This is the potency of divine spiritual personalities. Simply by their desire, simply by them being pleased, they can bestow benedictions and they can uh, enlighten a conditioned soul by their blessings. So these four great personalities blessed this young boy, Narada, and in due course of time, these personalities completed their uh, four months of the rainy season and departed from that place. So now, uh, Narada Muni, who was there with his mother only, uh, one day his mother went out into the forest to gather firewood and various things to perform her services. But she was by the fate, by the will of the Supreme, absolute uh, Supreme Being, she was bitten by a snake when she went into the forest. So at that time, uh, Narada Muni received this news of his mother's departure. And now Narada, he felt that he has nothing else in this world. 
He was completely without any other shelter, without any other relatives or associations. But because Narada Muni had received such blessings from these great sages, now Narada began to realize that he must leave that place and he must travel and he must begin his process of searching after the Supreme Lord and of performing the practice of pure bhakti, pure devotion. So he, be, he left that place and now Narada Muni began to wander here and there all throughout the countrysides, hillsides, forests and everywhere. And finally Narada Muni, at that time he was feeling some distress in his heart and he came into the middle of a forest area. And in that very dense forest area, he sat down and according to the instructions that he had received from these great sages, the young boy Narada began to perform the process of yoga, bhakti yoga, completely fixing his whole mind and attention, sitting very still in the forest with lo in lotus position and meditating, completely absorbed upon the Supreme Lord within his heart. And in this way, very intensively with uh, devotion, with his attempt to do pure devotion, pure bhakti, now, within a very short time, a most amazing thing happened. Suddenly, Narada Muni, that Lord that was within his heart that he was meditating upon, immediately he witnessed with divine vision that Supreme Lord right in front of him. And he saw the eternal transcendental spiritual form and spiritual qualities decorated with very beautiful gar uh, garments and carrying the, uh, in, in his forearms, carrying the four symbols of Lord Narayan, the Sudarshan Chakra, the uh, club, the disc, and the lotus flower. Uh, so now Narada was envisioning the Supreme Lord personally in front of him, the Supreme Absolute Truth from which the entire creation has come. And simply by seeing him in front of him with divine eyes, uh, he began to experience transcendental ecstasies all throughout his body. The Ashtasattvic Vikars, eight symptoms, transformations of the body appeared within the body of Narada Muni. And he began weeping and body trembling, hair standing on end. And in this way, he was experiencing transcendental ecstasy, seeing the Supreme Lord himself. But then all of a sudden, that vision of the Supreme Lord suddenly disappeared. And now Narad, he became very much anxious. He became very worried and he felt disturbance in his heart. And again, again, he sat down in the same way and made the same attempt again to perform this process of meditation. And with extreme effort, he was trying to focus on the Lord. And, but now he had felt like the very greatest treasure that he had ever conceived of and he had attained only momentarily. Now that treasure had slipped away from his hands. With such kind of anxiety, Narada was meditating, deeply absorbed. And in this way he made his attempt, but he was not able again to bring that vision of the Supreme Lord. Why? Because only if the Supreme Lord himself is, pure, is satisfied uh, completely satisfied with the devotee, he may reveal himself by his own mercy and by his own sweet will. It is not possible to force him to come, but he gave his mercy to Narada in this way. So Narada, now he was in great anxiety and distress, but suddenly now he heard a voice. The voice of the Lord spoke to him within his heart. And that voice told Narada, my dear boy, Narada, now I want you to know that I have given you very special benediction, that you were able to envision my divine form, even for a few moments. You were able to experience my divine qualities. You were able to have this wonderful transcendental divine vision. But unfortunately, it is not possible that those personalities who have not been completely purified and completely absorbed in pure transcendental love for me, they cannot see me. But only to give you a special incentive and to give you a special mercy, I gave this vision to you. 
because now this will increase your desire to see me. And therefore, throughout your entire life, you should now perform this process of pure bhakti, and you should go everywhere hearing, chanting, and remembering my divine glories. And again, one day in the future, you're, you will become qualified and fully purified, and you will again be united with me and witness my divine beauty and form. And suddenly, that voice disappeared, and now Narada Muni was sitting there all alone in the forest. He felt such deep, deep gratitude to that supreme, absolute Lord of his heart. And now Narada Muni went everywhere after that for his entire life, hearing and chanting and remembering and performing Nava Vidha Bhakti, the nine processes of pure devotion to the Supreme Lord. And at the end, final stage of his life, in that lifetime, then Narada Muni left his body completely absorbed in the Supreme Lord. And by the will of the Lord, Narada attained this next life as the son of Lord Brahma, the creator of this universe. And he became the, the transcendental sage, Sri Narada Muni, who goes everywhere eternally. Narada Muni, Bhajaya Veena, Radhika Ramana Name, playing on his transcendental Veena musical instrument, singing the glories of the Supreme Lord. So in this way, Narada Muni narrated his life history to Sri Vyasadev and explained to him how only by pure devotion, transcendental love for Krishna, can he, he be attained and can one attain the transcendental spiritual world. So Sri Vyasadeva heard this story from Narada Muni and received further instructions from Narada how he should become absorbed in pure bhakti yoga. So, you should know that human life is very short. Old age is persuading you. Very soon it will come. But only in human form that Krishna has mercifully given this, we can realize soul and super soul. This body is nothing but a bag of a stool, urine, blood, and so many things. But only in this human life you can realize soul and super soul and equal to the service of Krishna, what Rupa Goswami has told, not in other. No sadhu sangha. So, you are very fortunate and you are fortunate that you have come in the line of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, in the line of Rupa Goswami. And luckily, this slok, Nide Hamadam Sulabham Sulabham Slam Sukalpam Guru Karnagaran, Mayanukulin Nabhasvate Ritam Puman Puabdim, this human body and also very qualified guru who will not fall down like Swami Bhakti Vedanta you have, you are lucky. And also uncool by you, time to time my devotees are coming, myself also coming. I am inviting also a Prajmandal Parikrama to you. So many goes there. Now the Parikrama coming, I am inviting you all. If no money problem, you must come there also. So I am inviting also you. So thus, Sadhu Sangha, everything hmm, coming automatically. So if in this human life, you will not realize Krishna, Krishna Bhakti, this frame, then your life is in that. You are self-killer. What self-killer? Oh, you will be involved in karma, gyan, yog, tapasya, other things. So avoid them and come and practice. We are giving 
Shrimad Bhagavatam essence here. You should hear. And then, like Prahlad Maharaj, like Naradrishi Yusha, like other devotees, in the line of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, you see Sarupdamo, the Rayaramananda, and others. How Rupa Goswami, Sanatan Goswami practice Bhakti Job? Sankhya Purvak, Nam Gan Nativi, Kala Vasani Kutau, Nidrahar Bihar, Kad Vijitau, Chatant Dina Ushujau, Aradha Krishna Gudesh, Dei Madhuriman Dei Nisham, Bande Rupa Sanatan. Always, totally, no sleepness. Always writing books, remembering, chanting, doing pranam at least 108,008 times for all the Vaishnava, all these places of Krishna pastimes, Mahaprabhu pastimes, all the parikas, and doing so. Sometimes, हे राधे ब्रजदेवी के चललिते हे नंद सोना कुता श्री गोवर्धन कल्प पाद भतले कालिंदी बन्ने घोषण तावित सर्वतो खेदाय महाविगुण बंदे रूपसन। So we should follow their line. Don't waste your time only in the attachment of household, making money and be thinking to be happy. Give up all these things. You will all attend this in even a snake, hog, pig, any life you can have. So one in this life you should attend. You should try to do bhajan like them and be happy. My blessing is with you. Go Prima. Goswami is doing Sankha Purvak Nam, but our Samavar devotee, they thought in Jayadhan is too much. They reduced from our Giti Gucha so many Jayadhan is a cut-off, but it's too much for us. No. <laughs> Again, we would like to welcome our golden preceptor, that fearless Jagat Guru. Srila Bhaktivedanta Narayan Maharaj. Yeah. And his entourage. More fearless, fearless personalities. Prabhus, we're going to have two classes during this week. In the mornings. One at 7, 7.15. And one at 11. 10.30. and 10.30. Uh, tomorrow morning, Shamarani will kick it off. So please be in attendance. Every sannyasi here will be giving class, in, and also Shamarani. I have the displeasure of telling you two things that are very vital, though, during your visit here. The people who are in charge of this building would not mind seeing us leave. The rule here is that there is no camping anywhere around the building. So if you're camping, you'll have to find another beach. The other announcement, the other announcement was the registration will be over at the table here. For Shadam will not be served to those who do not have a ticket. Jai Prabhu's Hari Hari Prabhu. Govind Jai Jai Gopal Jai Jai Govind Jai Jai
was with me. Preaching. Something. Yes. How are we doing? We have Stoka. You remember Stoka? How was that? Your sister also She's in England. And how are you? I'm very good. Too. Mother? My mother is in Rindavan. I'm in Malon? Yeah. How are you? Where is your mother? She's here. She's here? She's here? She's good. Yeah. I'm trying to look It's on the movie. Now, remember, I was. You were right here. She has written you from Maui. From Maui. You were initiated by Turia. She wants to take your shelter. Friends. Oh yes, please. Take one, Father Lagetani. Thank you. Good, good.